Hello, I'm Peter Mondavi Jr. of the Charles Krug Peter Mondavi Family Winery. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to take you through a rich history of 150 years of winemaking in Napa Valley in California. 1861, that's when Charles Krug, a Prussian immigrant, founded Napa Valley's first winery. And he was the first person to produce commercial wine in Napa Valley, being the forefather of the Napa Valley wine industry. How he came about this property is he married Carolina Bale December 26, 1860, and with that marriage came a dowry of 500 acres of land in the heart of Napa Valley, which Charles Krug wasted no time in establishing his winery. He planted 15,000 vines the first year and expanded to 60,000 vines the next two years. Charles Krug hired Jacob Berenger as his first winemaker. By 1889, 140 wineries were in operation in the Napa Valley. Some of the more famous wineries, Schramsburg was founded in 1862, Beringer Winery in 1877, Inglenook 1879, Chateau Monalena 1882, and others as well. Between 1872 and 1893, phylloxera decimated the Napa Valley vineyards. This is a root louse that originated in the southeastern portion of the United States and made its way to Napa Valley, causing havoc with all the vineyards throughout Napa Valley. Charles Krug passed away in 1892. The banker, James Moffat Sr., assumed ownership in 1895 after his death. The Moffat family owned the winery from 1895 through 1943. Charles Krug's two daughters and nephew Bismarck Bruck continued to operate the winery until it closed in the advent of Prohibition in 1920. 1920 to 1933 saw the Prohibition Act in place. This raised havoc with the wine industry. In 1920, California had approximately 700 wineries. By the end of Prohibition in 1933, that was down to 130 wineries. Production dropped 94% during the beginning of Prohibition. The survival of a few wineries was dependent upon medicinal wine and sacramental wine for religious purposes. My grandparents, Cesare and Rosamond Davi, emigrated over from Italy in 1908 through Ellis Island, settling into Virginia, Minnesota, where they had family and friends that sponsored their immigration from Italy. At the onset of Prohibition in 1920, my grandfather started a business of shipping fresh wine grapes. Zinfandel and Alicante were some of the more common varieties under the brand names of Bocce and Valley Beauty to home winemakers in the area and expanding that to the northeast part of the United States. Shortly after that, in 1922, the whole family, now a family of four children, moved to California to further the business of shipping these grapes to the whole northeast part of the United States. In 1943, my grandparents purchased the Charles Krug Winery from James Moffat Jr. for a grand sum of $75,000. What they purchased was approximately 150 acres remaining of the original estate, the two grand old historical buildings built by Charles Krug, as well as the Charles Krug brand name. So that's how we have my family name associated with the Charles Krug brand name. 1944 was the first vintage under my dad, and we also produced the first vintage of the Vintage Select Cabernet Sauvignon, of which my dad has one bottle left in his cellars. The Napa Valley wine industry became more formalized. In 1944, the Napa Valley Vintner forms. 1948, the Napa Valley Technical Wine Group forms as well. My dad was part of the founding members, as well as my uncle Robert, Andre Chelichev, John Daniels of Inglenook, others from Beaulieu, Louis Martini as well. The Napa Valley Vintners celebrates its 65th anniversary this year. From seven founding members in 1944 to today, I've represented over 370 Napa Valley wineries. From 1960 to 1980 brought the change of ownership in Napa Valley. Large corporations started to move in, Pillsbury, Coca-Cola, Seagram's, Nestle's, to name a few. More to our personal history, Robert Mondavi departs from our company and in 1966 starts his winery just seven miles down the road, of course the Robert Mondavi Winery. How our portfolios have changed over the years. Here is a line card in 1966 featuring 27 different varieties produced under the Charles Krug brand. Today, we produce a focused eight SKUs, four of those being Bordeaux Reds. In the late 60s into the 70s, Napa Valley experienced exponential growth. In 1968, there were 680 acres of vineyards planted in Napa Valley and 25 wineries in Napa Valley. Ten years later, by 1978, there was almost 3,600 acres of Napa Valley vineyards and over 65 wineries in Napa Valley and growing. 
As a reference, today there are over 45,000 acres of planted vineyards in Napa Valley and well in excess of 400 wineries. And of course, in 78, we were buying land at $2,500 an acre, and today it's 100 times that amount at $250,000 an acre for premium acreage. Dad was the first to introduce French oak barrels for aging of our reds in 1963 in Napa Valley. Also, cold fermentation, which my dad developed at his days at Stanford and Berkeley through extensive research, was being widely implemented. In 1976, Napa Valley wines best the French in the judgment of Paris tasting. And now Napa Valley becomes a destination through the recognition of that tasting. From 1976 to 1981, increased exposure of the Napa Valley was coming about through a variety of publications. The Wine Spectator was established in 1976. Robert Parker starts publishing his Wine Advocate in 1978. Other forms of preservation came about. The Land Trust of Napa County was founded in 1976. In 1981, the Napa Valley is named the first American viticultural area in California as designated by the TTB. 1981, the Napa Valley Vintners founds the first consumer charity wine auction in the United States, Auction Napa Valley. By the early 90s, my family embarks on a 10-year replanting effort that changes the face of the Charles Krug vineyards. We have 850 acres of land throughout Napa Valley, spreading from Hal Mountain to St. Helena, Yachtville, and south to Carneros. We have replanted over 450 of these acres, with 72% of these plantings being in Bordeaux red varietals, which is the focus of our winery today. We have expenditures exceeding $21 million for the replanting of our vineyards, as well as all new production facilities for small lot fermentations of our Napa Valley lots. Most recently in 2008, we embarked on the restoration of the 1874 Redwood Cellar and our 1881 Carriage House. We were recognized by the Governor's Historic Preservation Award in November of last year. The Redwood Cellar still retains its original use as a wine aging facility for our family reserve wines. The carriage house has been converted into a beautiful entertainment area where the upstairs has glorious open ceilings that are covered with the recycled redwood from the redwood tanks that my grandparents installed in the 40s in our Redwood Cellar. This is the most current release of our Bordeaux Reds in the marketplace, and also it is the fabulous representation of our Bordeaux Red varietals today and moving forward. I invite you to seek out our Napa Valley Cabernet, Merlot, Generations, and our Vintage Select Cabernet, all of them getting great reviews. Stop by our winery to help celebrate our 150th anniversary. Quality has always been my family's focus and tradition ever since we bought this winery in 1943. We stand by those roots but continue to innovate in all aspects of grape growing and winemaking. Well, thank you for taking the last few minutes to go over a rich history of 150 years in Napa Valley in California. I invite you to come by the winery sometime this year and celebrate our 150th anniversary with us.